Shalom, and welcome to Via Hafta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. Tonight, we're going to begin a new book, Paul's first epistle to the Thessalonians. So I'd invite you to take out your Bible and look there with me. 1 Thessalonians and chapter 1. Now, in this first chapter, and our hope is that we'll complete chapter 1 in this study, Paul, he brings greetings. He exalts this congregation as a congregation that has a mighty testimony, one that is indeed influencing others, not just in their normal location of where they reside, but also in a very unnormal way, touching people in different parts of the world, having a testimony and an impact in faraway places. And that's what God wants for his people. God can do such great things by using us and touching people that can be around the world. You never know how God is going to use you. The things that you say, you don't know who's listening. When you tell someone biblical truth, you don't know where they're going to be traveling to, what they might share, what might impact their life, and bring about a change, a godly change in their life that will impact others for years and years. So be faithful and expect great things to happen well let's begin first thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 1 now it begins by by telling us who are the authors now perhaps paul his name is first that he's the primary one but notice what it says paul and silon anos and timothy these three and it says to the congregation, the ecclesia, the church of the Thessalonians, in Father God and Lord Messiah Yeshua. Now, we're going to see that several times in this epistle, he is going to speak about God as Father and as Messiah as Lord. And what's the relationship? Why is he linking these together? And the answer is simple. Father relates to provider. So when God is revealed in the scripture as Father God, he is a, a, a giver of those provisions, those things that he provides to us that we need to, to serve him, to walk with him, to live in this world. And the way that we find access to these things is by recognizing Yeshua, not just that he's Savior, but notice that there's an emphasis upon Yeshua as Lord. So when you walk recognizing the authority of Messiah in your life, it, it brings about God's provision in your life. Secondly, as we keep reading, he's going to speak as he frequently does in epistle by these words. He says, grace to you and peace from Father or from God, our Father. Now, notice grace and peace. And we've studied this before in other epistles. But notice grace has a purpose to bring us into, and I hope you know what the answer is. Grace brings us into the will of God. Grace saves us, but it moves in our life. It matures us, and it compels us to be in God's will. Now, why did I bring the will of God into this? Because if we want peace, peace is the outcome. It's the byproduct. It's the result of being in God's will. So grace moves us into God's will whereby we can experience that peace once more grace and peace to you from god our father and lord messiah yeshua 
Now, he's addressing this congregation at Thessaloniki, speaking to the Thessalonians. And notice what he says in verse 2. We give thanks to God always. There is a consistency to these three men's prayers. And it's consistently affirming this congregation that they are a godly assembly that god is using them beyond their their normal boundaries so he says we give thanks to god always concerning all of you making mention of you in our prayers now another thing that we can see is that paul's not ashamed to say that he is a man of prayer that he prays without ceasing he prays daily and he prays for other and one of the things we see so frequently is paul paul's epistle is how he rejoices in seeing the growth the maturity the success the the testimony that these congregations that he writes to to see how they are working in the will of god verse verse two he says here or actually verse three without ceasing making mention and pay attention to this making mention of your work of faith now again things are recorded in a certain way for a specific reason it's not by chance that he emphasizes your work of faith what that tells us is this faith works faith goes to work and it produces an outcome when he says your work he's talking about deeds he's talking about uh, good deeds deeds that manifest faith and here's the takeaway for us when we are walking in faith we are going to be doing the work of god you can't do god's work without faith i've said many times that faith is related to truth and the message is simple i put truth into my life i make it an action take faith and put it to work behaving and that emphasizes something it emphasizes that i am a servant of god when we walk in faith we are going to be serving god so let me ask you this question are you putting faith into action are you having a testimony of work that you're doing the work of god that's what a servant of god does the work of god so he says without ceasing making mention of your work of faith and notice something else labor of love so it's not something that that is uh uh hard for paul to to get up in the morning and say i've got to serve god Paul loves that. It's a labor of love. He is not compelled out of a sense of obligation. He is compelled by a desire, a joy to do the work of God. And let me just share with you something that's so true. When you begin to serve God, you will want to serve Him more. When you see the benefit, of of one's life given over dedicated living sacrificial for the things of god when you experience the benefit of that and the greatest benefit is knowing god you know people and there's more and more that we hear about that uh supposedly had faith i doubt if they did supposedly had faith and they walk away they get involved in something else i can tell you those were not people who were serving god according to his truth they may have been in so-called ministry but they weren't serving god according to his truth because when you do you experience him and you grow in your knowledge of him and you benefit from being in his presence and there's that provision we talked about earlier all those things they are going to produce greater faithfulness greater activity in the things of god and that's why look again paul says and the labor of love and when you love god and you love serving god you are going to and it says and the perseverance or the endurance of hope now hope i've talked about that much 
hope is believing in the written promises of God. What God specifically defines as what He has promised us. Good promises. And therefore, we are going to endure as we stay the course, wanting to inherit. That's what hope is, a desire to inherit what we do not see yet, but we hear. Faith comes by hearing. We believe these are the things that God has promised. These are the things that we're going to receive. But to receive them, we need to stay the course. We need to walk in faith. And this hope is the anchor to continuing in the faith and notice it goes on and says not just the endurance of hope but of our lord messiah yeshua before god also our father what happens well it's a pursuit of not just the promises of god but the lord himself the living god so as i serve god i am growing in my knowledge of god I'm having experiences with God. I come to to be in his presence more, experience his love, his provision, his comfort, his instruction, his guidance, his influence in my life. And when you're experiencing that, you don't want to walk away from, from him. You're not going to deny your faith. You are on fire. You are excited. You see the faithfulness of God carried out in the will of God when you were about his business move on he says in verse verse 4 knowing beloved brothers now knowing beloved brothers and we're beloved because by God by God your election so knowing your election Oh, beloved brothers, this election that came by God. Now, election is a very important biblical term. Now, we have to ask who's speaking because when Messiah uses that term of election, he is speaking primarily of the Jewish people, the descendants of Jacob, those who were in that covenant, that special covenant. But when Paul speaks about election, he is speaking about election and referencing it to believers all believers jew and gentile alike and that word election we hear that many people want to bring a lot of baggage with that a lot of extra definitions to it a greater understanding of what the word literally means which is chosen now god how did he choose this individual for his kingdom now some would teach and they're false teachers that God, because he's sovereign, and he is sovereign, but they will say, God, who is sovereign, he can choose anyone he wants, and he chooses some, and he rejects others. And those that he chooses, he gives irresistible grace to, meaning that grace, they cannot, cannot reject it. They are going to come to faith. God is going to make them come to faith. And they believe that 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 is irresistible grace that God, so to speak, zaps them with is going to produce regeneration. And that regeneration is going to cause them to to believe. But you know what's interesting? We see that biblically it's salvation that leads to regeneration, not the other way around. And notice what we see here in the scripture. See, scripture answers its own questions. When it speaks here, look at the text again, verse verse 4, where he speaks about here, uh, knowing, knowing, beloved brothers, by God, your, your election. He says here that this election, what comes immediately after? Is it simply God choosing some and rejecting others? Well, it's not by accident. When you read on to the next verse, verse 5, the first thing that's mentioned is that our gospel, the gospel that came to the Thessalonians, it brought about the change. It, It was the center. Them receiving the gospel, it was foundational in them being chosen by God. 
everyone is chosen by their response to the gospel now that does not mean that we play a role in our salvation our salvation was achieved eternally by messiah for the work that he did on the cross i've said many times god confirms that by having raised messiah yeshua from the dead that is testified to we hear that and when we say yes that's not work saying yes is simply receiving it and when we receive it by faith what's the outcome we are going to be chosen by god you say well we were chosen before the foundations of the earth yes god knows all things he chose us but here's the key there is no being chosen apart from being in messiah so verse verse 5 because our gospel did not come to you in word only but also in power and in the holy spirit now what's important about this power and in the holy spirit one of the things that should always come into our mind when the holy spirit is is referred to is that he works in our life to bring about god's righteousness not just being declared righteousness that we can enter into the kingdom of god but righteous behavior now what's the relationship well the holy spirit speaks about order and then notice it says prior to that about power our gospel did not come to you just in word only but in power and in the holy spirit now here's what the scripture is saying we have the power by means of the holy spirit in order to demonstrate to bear witness to god's order for our life and his order for our life is just another way of saying god's will so do you really want god's will think about this god knows all things nothing surprises god god has perfect vision of the future what's going to happen and he has a will for your life and it is so foolish for people to pray what they want asking god to bless their will do their will rather than god's will faith is saying no to what i want and yes to what god wants because i acknowledge what he wants is right what he wants is good what he wants is going to have results very very different than when i want so notice how the scripture unfolds because our gospel did not come unto you by word only but also in power and in the spirit the holy spirit and in what we could say much assurance having a full a complete assurance and this is important because when you receive the gospel you should have full assurance total assurance that what god has said to you about being saved being a kingdom person a saint that these things are true you don't doubt you don't question you have assurance of that because god does not lie so full assurance and after that it says much much full assurance just as you know how we we came unto you and through you so he says remember the witness that we gave how we came to you and how we were among you how they lived their lifestyle that was a testimony and paul says i want you to remember just that he says you know how that means in what manner that that we uh were were before you and also through you meaning on account of you for your well-being verse six and you as an outcome of that the influence that paul and timothy and others had that were with paul and served their other believers he says and you became imitators of us and of the lord 
now being an imitator of paul and we could say even the lord they just didn't do the things that paul was doing but they were walking as messiah would have them to walk they were living in a way that manifests messiah's presence in their life doing the things that he would do and then notice what it says as we continue on not just that you became imitators of us and also of the lord but now he's going to tell us how we do that what is key and it's right here receiving the word and notice in much affliction now literally this is the word tribulation so having much tribulation tribulation can work in our life and it will work in our life in order to bring change give us a different perspective to set us on a different course in order to cause us to realize something this is what we were talking about earlier about our work and the trip coming up tribulation god's not the author of it but he can use it for a glorious purpose so once more the scripture teaches us and you have become our imitators and also of the lord having received the word in much tribulation but notice how it ends also it says with joy the joy of the holy spirit now what's the joy of the holy spirit the joy of the holy spirit is this when i am walking with god and the enemy attacks the holy spirit comes and works he defends he helps he assists he empowers he gives knowledge so that we can have victory so the joy of the holy spirit is the holy spirit leads us to victory leads us not to fall prey to the attacks and the deceit of the enemy verse verse 7 so that you became examples to all the ones believing all the ones believing in macedonia and acacia now think about this what a testimony having an impact on these two regions macedonia and acacia and they were this group in greece in a town called thessaloniki but they were having impact far beyond their borders and who enabled that god did and god will do that same thing for everyone who walks sincerely and walks in the truth of god despite experiencing many tribulations verse verse 8 for from you the word of the lord was sounded not only in macedonia and acacia but listen to this that word was sounded through their faithfulness and it says but also in every place that your faith with god went forth so there was a variety of places where their faithfulness just wasn't with them but it impacted it brought about a result walking in faith being obedient to god can bring about great changes things that we may not be aware of but god he will answer prayer move in people's life because of other people's faithfulness now look at at verse verse uh, uh, eight the second part so that we did not have need to speak something so paul said you know we would go around and we would see the effects the outcome the results of you serving god to the extent that we would go there and we didn't have to speak we didn't have to do the the ministry we could see the impact you were having the powerful outcome that your faithfulness was having verse 9 for they themselves our report how it entered to you now what it says in this passage a little bit awkward in the original language but for they themselves meaning the thessalonians they themselves 
were our report. And the report said how we had entrance to you. And that entrance to this community, what the result was, he says, and how you turn from you turn to God from idols. This was the outcome. They had a open door access in order to do things in order to bring about such a change in this location. Realize ancient Greek full of idols, full of those things that are in conflict. But because of, of Paul and Timothy and others serving, it brought about a change well beyond the confines of this this town this community in order to turn turn these people away from idols and to what does it say to serve the living and true god don't you want to have an impact on someone to turn them away from that which is not of god and bring them to serve the true and living god that's what it's all about one more verse and we'll close and to wait for his son now the coming of his son is a kingdom event doesn't mean the kingdom is going to be established when messiah comes for believers but it means this we're going to enter into the kingdom the kingdom of heaven because of that so this this waiting with assurance that he's coming to do what he said he was going to do this has an outcome notice what it says in verse 10 and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead yeshua now yeshua having been raised from the dead happened two thousand years ago that resurrection given being given the name above all names and we look prophetically that this suffering servant this one who's like the son of god he is the son of god but the text says like the son of god meaning he is the son of god he is going to bring about a great benefit for us and that's why we look for his return as it says here and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead yeshua what is he coming he's coming to deliver us to deliver us from what god's wrath that's what it says to deliver us from the wrath that is coming so what this tells us is this if i am a follower of messiah and that faith is genuine it is going to manifest itself i'm going to have an impact on others and it's going to be an impact on me because i will not experience god's wrath god's wrath is not designated for believers it's designated for non-believers and for a remnant remnant of the house of israel they are going to in these difficult times they're going to come to faith and my hope and my prayer is that you and i that we can have some influence in this world to play a role in that being a reality for more and more people well I'll close with that until next week may god bless you shalom from israel well we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org again to find out more about us please visit our website loveisrael.org there you will find articles and numerous other lectures by baruch these teachings are in video form may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel.